Welcome back to the channel. It's a cold winter day at Tech Motion, about nine Fahrenheit outside. So it seems like a good day for a hot cup of coffee and try to deal with some cooling problems on an indoor job on this 67 Mustang. So some of you guys may remember this car. Uh, I put a 347 and a 4R70W and a full ride tech suspension, power rack and pinion, Dakota digital cluster, Corbo Sport seats and a whole bunch of other nice goodies in this Resto Mod car a couple of years back. And it's been working good, but it runs hot. And the reason it runs hot, for sure, is because it has the stock, non-clutch, non-shroud fan system, belt-driven fan system. So today we're going to put an electric fan in this car and try to get the temperature problems all sorted out on it. Now, the electric fan install I'm going to show you is on this 67, but the exact same principles apply to whatever car you have, whether it's a hot rod, a resto mod, a classic Mustang like this, Fox body, a Chevy, whatever you got, the same principles are going to apply. There'll be a few little differences in how it's controlled or how it's wired up, but for the most part, it's all going to be the same when you do a custom electric like this. So when it comes to a fan on one of these kind of cars, any way you slice it, it's a custom job. So it's up to you to spec out the parts and get them right. The first thing you're going to need is a fan. So I chose this Spall fan here for the project. Spall are one of the outfits that make a huge variety of fans in various sizes. You take a measurement of your core, you figure out what fan is going to fit based on the core dimensions and most of these fans are round or you can buy them in pairs if you have a very restrictive application or one that the core is wide and short for instance. There are lots of outfits that make fans but in my experience when it comes to CFM ratings if Spall rates a fan 2000 CFM and somebody else rates a fan 2000 CFM the Spall fan will invariably deliver more air. I don't know why that is, but it seems to be pretty standard. So that's why I use Spall for this kind of a job. This particular fan is what Spall calls a 16 inch. So it's a round fan, more or less. It's got little flat spots on the top and bottom or sides, depending on how you're radiator is oriented. It's got a modular plug on the bottom for the wiring. However, Spall never supplies the other side of this connector. So I always end up having to cut this off and put uh, wiring connectors on there, blade connectors. <clears throat> In order to put this on, we're going to take the factory fan off and we're going to take the extension on the factory fan off. We should have lots of clearance. It's a stock type radiator. And then we're going to mount this on there. Now, there are a couple of things that you got to look for when you're mounting a fan like this. First is, I'm going to bring this up so you can maybe get a little closer look at it. Lots of times these fans have some play. This one looks pretty good. And if you were to look at it edge on, you'll see that the part of the fan that rotates is pretty well flush or maybe even protrudes inboard slightly from the housing or the shroud. Now because of that you have to be cautious when you install this that you have a clearance between the shroud and the radiator otherwise it's possible for the fan to suck up into the radiator or a place like this which does protrude a little bit to actually bore a hole in the radiator core. So you need a little clearance here as a part of your mounting solution. In addition to the fan, you're going to need some wiring. So the fan needs to be run through a relay. I always use one of these heavy 80 amp relays with a 10 gauge wiring harness on it. A relay like this is highly unlikely to fail in a fan application where a standard 30 amp automotive relay can fail. Why? When the fan runs, when it's running continuously, it might be consuming 15, 20, 25, even 30 amps, somewhere that's within the rating of a typical automotive relay. 
However, when it turns on, the inrush amperage could be 65 or 70 amps. So if you have a light duty relay, one that's only good for 30 amps, let's say, and you constantly hit it with a 65 amp turn on, and of course the fan will be turning on and off and on and off as you drive the car. You constantly hit that relay with a 65 amp turn on, it can tend to burn the contacts in the relay. The relay will weld itself either open or closed and then either the fan won't shut off even after you shut the car off or it won't turn on and then you got a really hot car problem. So do yourself a favor, buy a serious relay with a 10 gauge harness and then you're not going to have any trouble with it. Another thing you're going to need is a fuse to protect that circuit. Buy yourself a fuse holder like this with a 10 gauge harness. I'm going to use 10 gauge wire throughout the whole system. That's going to give me very low resistance and it's going to uh, reduce the chances of having a heat problem in the wiring. A 10 gauge harness like this usually comes in a loop. So you just snip that loop, then you attach the fuse in line and away you go. You're also going to want a selection of 10 gauge wiring. Uh, red and black are usually good enough. Yeah, this wiring is kind of expensive, but honestly, when you're doing a fan like this, use serious wiring. When it comes to mounting the fan, <laughs> you're a little bit on your own here. But there are a number of commercial products which can help you. The one I'm going to actually use here is this deal. It's got a plastic tab here that fits into tabs on the fan housing and then allows you to bolt this steel bracket to the radiator itself. There are other systems though, like for instance, these are similar kind of items. They're designed to slip into the fan housing and then bolt up to something here. And usually this is done in conjunction with your own bracket. By your own bracket, I mean one you fabricate specifically for the job. And sometimes that's your only choice, is to make your own bracket. Another option that's out there are these pull-through mounting ties. So this is something that you typically use for a, like a transmission cooler, where you can tie one radiator to another by pulling these plastic tabs directly through the, through the core of the other radiator. It's not the greatest plan for a fan, but I have seen successful mounts of electric fans that use this kind of a, you know, zip tab and they work. So that's an option that's out there may help or it may help secure one corner or, or the lower portion of the fan or something like that. And the final issue with a fan like this is how you're going to control it. So there's a bunch of strategies. You can control it as simply as with a hand switch in the cab. You can have it controlled so that it's on all the time the key is on. Those are not the greatest strategy, but they work. And, you know, on my race car, I have a separate switch for the fan. So it's fine for an application like that. Um, if you have an EFI car, like this. Uh, this one has Sniper on it, Holly Sniper. Sniper provides uh, fan control capability and we're going to use that to trigger the relay which will turn the fan on and off and then the fan will be controlled based on the temperature from the coolant temperature sensor in the Holly Sniper. Most EFI systems have an option for that and if you don't have an EFI system like that or you use a factory Fox body let's say which technically doesn't have fan control. There is a way to jimmy up the factory system to work with a fan, but not from, not out of the box. It doesn't work that way. Um, you can use a separate controller. So there's a whole bunch of separate fan controllers out in the marketplace. Usually they have a temperature probe, which goes into the fins on the radiator. Sometimes they use a, a coolant temperature switch, which is threaded into a boss in the cooling system somewhere. Although I prefer the temperature probe 
most of the ones with a temperature probe have an adjustment knob so you can configure when the fan turns on and then it'll have a preset amount cooler it has to get before it turns off. You know, it'll cool down 10 degrees before it turns off, for instance. Some of those controllers have a built-in 30 amp automotive style relay. And I usually caution against using those because those controllers can end up with a relay failure, especially if you use a powerful fan like the one that I'm gonna put in this car. So I prefer to use the EFI control and my own relay, or if I was using one of those controllers with a built-in relay, I still prefer to use my own relay in the fan power circuit and just use that controller's relay for the turn on to my own heavy relay. Really the first step in this job is to get this factory fan off. You can see it's a you know, new stock replacement type radiator. There's no shroud. And this thing is just not that good of a fan. That's why the car runs hot. So we got a, there's a couple of bolts in the snout here. They're long bolts. We're gonna take those off and replace them with short bolts that just bolt this water pump pulley on. Then we can go ahead and start working on attaching the fan here. Most radiators are like this where they have some mounting holes along the edge of the core here. And that's where we hope to mount these brackets for the plastic fan mount. If you look down in there, you can see the backside of one of those little zip ties, which is tying the transmission cooler to the front of this radiator. We take a look around the front. You can see the aftermarket transmission cooler in there for the 4R70W. Let's start by disconnecting the ground on the battery. And I'm gonna get some fender protectors to put on the fenders. Maybe first I'm gonna just use a little quick detail and a clean microfiber and just dust those off before I put the fender protectors on. Okay. Now, pull this out carefully so as not to screw up our core. Uh, well, I had forgotten this is fine thread. It looks like I'm gonna need about four, three quarter inch long, uh, five sixteenths fine thread bolts, which even though I have a pretty good bolt bin, I don't have that. So it's gonna be a part store run at this point, I guess. And that, my friends, is not at all uncommon on a job like this. You end up shorted some little thing that's not that consequential, but that you can't live without. Let's try and get a little look at how this fan might fit in here. Yeah, and I can see if I just was to flush mount this, <laughs> it's gonna touch the core and bore a hole right through it. Of course, I have this overflow tank in the way. I think we'll have to take that off. So I'm gonna get started on the wiring. Now when you go and uh, do a wiring job on a project like this, like a custom wiring job for a fan, you need to start out by planning what you're gonna do. So as you can see, this car has a bunch of add-on relays and so on down in here. Down there, maybe you can sort of just see there is a 150 amp breaker for the 3G alternator. And by the way, the car does have a 3G alternator, so there's enough electrical power to run a fan like this. You will need some serious electrical power for a fan like this. But I think what <clears throat> my rough plan is, is to put this fan relay down in there like that. And <clears throat> ultimately, I'd be just as happy to normally connect it to the positive side of the starter relay, but I got a lot of stuff connected there. And in fact, this car may be getting to the stage where it needs a separate power lug. Um, but if I do put a separate power lug in, it's probably gonna be over in here somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is connect it straight to the battery initially, 
and that'll be compatible with being moved over to here. I'll make sure we leave enough wire there that we could move it over to a separate power lug here or here or somewhere in this general area if we decide to go that way in the future. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to wire from the battery through the fuse to the relay, then from the relay to the fan. And I'm going to cut that connector off, put spades on there. Then for grounds, I already have a nice ground spot here, which I've been using for these other relays. We can ground the uh, fan itself back there if we want. It's a good idea to make sure that you understand how your control is going to work. So over here is the Sniper's 10-pin connector and there are some stubs that are in this loomed up portion of the harness. And I think that light blue wire there is the Fan 1 control line and the way Sniper works is it uses a ground side control. So it'll ground that blue wire when it wants to turn the fan on. So what we're going to do with the relay is we're just going to tie the um, plus side of it directly to the uh, battery and then we'll tie the uh, minus side of it or the ground side of it to that uh, sniper control line and then we can tell the sniper what uh, temperature we want it to turn on at. I'm not going to bother you with all the test fitting on this but I've got the fan roughly fit in there. That's going to be a reasonable location for it and you can see my power coming out on that side. We'll run that over to where our relay and everything's going to be. Um, it's attached with number 10 stainless uh, screws here in, in four places. And when we're satisfied that we've got this in the right place, we'll cut off the excess on these straps. All four of them have to be cut. And then we'll mark them. We'll have to mark which ones are which corner. We'll have to set, uh, be settled on our orientation. So we'll mark which orientation the fan's in. Now, that's a rough test fit, but remember I said that the fan could touch the core? It's too close here. Definitely, if it's not touching the core, it will be. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to have to make some adjustments here. Probably put uh, spacers here to space that forward, and I may need some additional fasteners longer fasteners for that. I could potentially space it forward here, but I got a feeling that uh, I'm better off to space it forward here. I'm not going to bore you with all of the endless test fitting steps that are required to make a custom job like this go. Um, I had to manufacture some spacers here to offset the fan back from the radiator core because and you can even see from just sitting on the ground the center hub of the fan protrudes uh, it's convex and it's actually the closest part and this part rotates so if you just slap it on and tighten it up to the core um, you're going to cut a hole in the core so you've got to have it set back oh. and i put insulated spades on here now Here's a little tip for you. If you put insulated spades on, put male on one side and female on the other so you can't mix them up. Then when you make up the other end of your harness, do the same. Then when you go to plug it together, you're underneath the car, whatever, it's a little bit awkward. You can't mix them up. So in this case, on the fan side, I have positive female and negative male. Then on the harness side, I have the matching ones. And that way you can't plug 
the wrong connector in. These bolts that originally were supplied to this strap kit are metric carriage bolts. I don't know if there's any way you can see this. They're metric carriage bolts. Well, even the guy at the bolt place I deal with all the time laughed at me when I asked if he had something like that. They have imperial carriage bolts, but quarter inch carriage does not fit this. It's all metric. So I ended up using uh, regular metric hex head bolts, but I'm going to reuse the nylocks. These have only been tightened up once. I didn't use them for any of the test fitting. And that should hold this stuff in place adequately. So I think this is the final test fit for the physical installation. And you can see I've left these uh, straps a little long, but I've marked them with a paint stick here where I'm going to cut them. So now we're more or less satisfied with how this is going to fit in here. I'm going to cut those straps. We're going to take it all out one more time, cut those straps, and then I'm going to assemble it with nylocks on these number 10 screws in order to ensure that they stay put. And I'm also going to put some truck bed cap between on the back side here to try and prevent any damage to the radiator core. Now, this side, I don't think is going to touch. The strap is set longer on this side. And if you look here, I don't know if you can get a good look at this, but this radiator can actually move and it can impact the core there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some of this bed cap foam uh, protector on the back side of this. And you can see it definitely needed this 15 millimeter spacer in order to pull it away far enough that the hub of the fan doesn't contact the core. This is the truck bed cap stuff. It's sticky on one side. It's a foam uh, protector. And I'm going to take and put that. I've done a test stick here where I've just stuck it to a scrap piece of aluminum. Sticks on there pretty good. So I'm going to take and I'm going to stick pieces of that on the back side of these straps so that that foam is between these bolt heads and the radiator. And a final step here is these, these little uh, deals can slide out. They just slide in and out. They don't have little, they have tabs, but they don't have little locks on them. There are little holes through the fan housing here. And what I'm doing with that is I took some welding wire you can see here, I did this one, pass the welding wire through, twist it tight, and then just kind of bend that end down out of the way. And then that will hold that in place and stop it from pushing forward. If these little tabs were to pop out, uh, the fan can shift towards the radiator and cut up the core. So you must do something here. I think you could use zip ties. I tested some little zip ties. That's one of the test fit things I did, but I thought, I bet one of those ties breaks at some point. So wire is probably a better choice. And don't forget that step or you'll have a disaster despite your best efforts. Okay, so that's our final assembly. I've got uh, nylocks in here. I've just snugged them so I can still move these little arms and then I will tighten them once we're actually in place. I've got everything wired. I've got the wiring connectors in place that I want. And I've got my little fasteners that are gonna be used to fasten to the radiator. These are, these are little number 10 bolts and I've got little nylocks for these as well. <coughs> I test fit it with these three quarter inch long ones, but I'm gonna see if I can't install it with the nylocks with these half inch long ones, uh, it would make it a little bit neater. All right, before we get too crazy with uh, putting the fan in, I'm going to put finish putting these little water pump pulley bolts in place. These are 5 16 fine thread and I got some half inch long fasteners here. You need to be mindful of 
how long the fasteners are because you don't want it to touch at the back here. You'll thank yourself for doing this before you have the electric fan in place. Now you got these metal brackets sticking out here. Try and get them sort of roughly in place and just be mindful of what you're doing here so that you don't end up cutting something up. And you can kind of rest that in there, get your first fastener. There's a nylock started on there. So I'm not going to go completely tight on those until we've got it set up in the bottom. Never mind you guys seeing it. I can't even see it. <laughs> eh, what a terrible place to work. Actually, it feels stiffer than it did before. So that's good. So I'm going to take a piece of this adhesive foam and I'm going to stick it in behind the bolt head and rad on each of these fasteners and I'm going to kind of press that up into place. So try to give you a little bit of an idea how this is done. There's a nylock here, there's a hex head bolt here, there's a piece of foam, adhesive foam between that bolt head and the radiator core. There's a number 10 screw, machine screw with a nylock on it there. And there's a plastic custom made, it's a 3D printed out of ASA 15 millimeter spacer there. And with it in place, everything in place, the fan feels actually really solid. And I haven't actually tightened up or foamed the top. And I've got it the same on both sides. And you can see my wiring connectors are there. They're ready for me to put a relay up in this area up in here and run the wiring. I think that foam is going to capture that fairly well. So that looks pretty good. And we've got good clearance here. Like I can slide my whole hand through there. Okay, so here's my final made up harness, which I'm gonna stick down in on the passenger side uh, inner fender here ahead of the shock tower. It's got the 80 amp relay, it's labeled. It's got a 30 amp fuse in this fuse holder. It's got connectors here, which are opposite, one male and one female for the fan itself. It's got a connector for the trigger from the sniper, so this is the ground side connector. And then the positive, there's a terminal here for the battery, or if we decide to put a, um, like a power uh, block in there, we can hook it up to that. And the plus 12 volt side of the trigger circuit on the relay is tied together from the battery feed. Okay, so all we're gonna do here, everything's drilled and ready. We're going to kind of fit this in and we're going to install this self tapper. So I've run the sniper ground trigger for the fan over to here and that's got a disconnect on it that I can connect up to, uh, <clears throat> to our relay. That's what's going to trigger the relay and turn the fan on. But I want to test this system and I like to test it while everything's cold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reconnect the battery. Then I'm going to take this jumper here, which I've got a bare end on. And I'm going to plug it into the trigger side of this relay. Okay, so I've got this jumper plugged into the trigger side of the relay. If I touch this to ground, then if everything's working right, the fan should start. And it does. So that means once I plug the sniper trigger into that, 
Then whenever the sniper grounds that pin, which will be based on a signal from the engine coolant temperature sensor, whenever it grounds that pin, it'll trigger the fan start up. So I think that is a good fan install. Let me get this test trigger unplugged. We'll plug the real <laughs> trigger in. I'm gonna clean up this harness a little bit uh, as a last step, but uh, I'm testing some other stuff. There's some other electrical stuff to do. So I'm not gonna worry too much about the routing and looming of this trigger wire, but we'll get that cleaned up before we're all done uh, in conjunction with some of the other electrical changes. Well, that completes our custom fan install. Whenever you do one of these, you need to watch out for the things that I showed you, clearance to the radiator core, wire polarity, how you trigger it, and how heavy a relay and fuse system you use in it. This setup should work well now, and hopefully the car will stay cool. The final step, which I'll show you on another day when we're booting this car up, is to set the sniper for your fan turn on. So we'll probably set this one to turn on around 180 or something like that. Um, that should keep the car cool and should be compatible with the thermostat that we have installed in it. So I'll show you that as a sort of final step, but for all intents and purposes, this fan configuration is done and it's just a couple of ticks in a software box now. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell so that you won't miss out on future videos.